Good morning again. Happy May Day from Ottawa First United Methodist Church. We worship here in the sanctuary by wearing masks and practicing the new safe distancing. Our service is live stream on, on Facebook at 1045 and broadcast on KOFO radio at 11 o'clock. If you would like to receive a weekly bulletin by email for, Sunday, for the Sunday service, just notify, call the office and, and let them know. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please turn them in at the office and we'll get those. From Hebrews 10.22, it says, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. Dear Lord, that is just what we want to do in this hour of worship. We give thanks and praise for the path that you have chosen for us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the messengers, the ministers of this hour who bring us your word through song, scripture, and words of wisdom. Fill us with your spirit so that we may be a light in the darkness. We ask these things in your holy name, amen. Good morning. As you're able, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Come to Christ, the true vine, and bear much fruit. We have come to abide in the vine and to bear the fruit of salvation. Come to love one another, for love is of God. We have come to the household of love, for God is love. 
Come to set aside your fears, for perfect love drives out fear. We have come to love one another, as God has loved us. Come, all are welcome here. Now, please remain standing for our opening songs and the Black Hymnal, One God and Father of us all, and we are one in Christ Jesus. Jesus, we're going to sing this through three times. The second time, we're going to sing it in Spanish, which is in the book. I personally will be leaning heavily on the Holy Spirit for that verse, <laughs> but we need to step out in faith, right? So I believe the words will be up on the screen, right? That is right. In Spanish, we hope so, yes, okay. Señor, un solo 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 Señ
if you will join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, the soil of your love nurtures the roots of our lives each and every day. As we consecrate ourselves into your loving care, plant us in the soil of your love, that we may abide in Christ, our true vine, and bear the fruit of your love and grace. Give us rain in seasons of doubt and nourish our growth, that in harvest of love may bless the world. In your bountiful name we pray, amen. singing You Are My King, accompanied by Pastor Jay on the piano.
If you would please stand for the reading of the scripture. This morning, the scripture reading comes from Job chapter 23, verses 10 to 17, and it reads, But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come out like gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and have not turned aside. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured in my bosom the words of his mouth. But he stands alone, and who can dissuade him? What he desires, that he does. For he will complete what he appoints for me, and many such things are in his mind. Therefore, I am terrified of his presence. When I consider, I am in dread of him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Please be seated. Today is the first Sunday of May. While it may be spring, it is also tornado season. There are many natural disasters in the world. I've heard some people say that it is scary to live in Kansas because of tornadoes. But those people were living in Florida, the state of hurricanes. (laughs) Some people say that California has the best weather, but they are threatened by earthquakes and fires. We cannot control natural disasters, but we can overcome them through the wisdom of God. The world is struggling with the coronavirus right now. Worldwide confirmed COVID cases have risen to over 800,000 new cases every day, especially in the India every day, over 400,000 people is confirmed. Many countries have encountered issues with obtaining and distributing the vaccine. We should survive in this situation through the wisdom from God. When we face hardship in our lives, we should ask for wisdom from God. Because God is the master key. If we have too many worries, we cannot feel safe. There is no one who lives without any troubles or problems. However, people often think that their burdens are heavier than any others. In today's scripture, we can see a person who overcame a tremendous hardship. All other hardships do not compare to Job's. Job lost all ten of his children and all his properties at once. And he suffered from illness. Job was called a righteous man, but he suddenly faced these sufferings in his life. We should learn a lesson from Job. Job kept his faith even though he faced 
great hardship. And this morning, we will think about faith within hardship through the story of Job and share the grace of God. We need to know that even a righteous man goes through hardship. In Job chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Job was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. He was a righteous man in front of God. He offered bond offerings for his ten children after they have, fe- they have feast days. He tried to walk with God and be a righteous man in front of God. However, Job lost his properties, his children, and his health. Regardless of what kind of life we live, we cannot avoid the hardships. Job's case shows this well. Job had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, and 500 donkeys. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. In Job chapter 1, verse 13 through 19, we can see how he lost his properties and children. One day, he heard the Sabians killed his servant and took his oxen and donkeys. While a servant was speaking, another servant came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servant and consumed them. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The Chaldeans made a raid on the camels and carried them off and killed the servant. While he was still speaking, another servant came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating in their eldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came across the desert, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. Everything happened at the same time. On the top of that, he was afflicted with loathsome sores on his body from head to toe. He took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Job did not know the reason behind all this. So he fell into a depression. In that situation, his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. However, in Job chapter 2, verse 10, it says, But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lip. Job tried to keep his faith within hardships. As we live in our lives, as we live in this world, we may face hardships and sufferings. However, we don't need to be disappointed or depressed. In Korea, there is, there is a saying that if you cannot avoid the hardships, enjoy them. 
instead of complaining, we should change our minds to rely on our circumstances. We should prepare an umbrella when it is rain, because we cannot stop rain. We should take off our coat when it is sunny. We cannot change anything by our own will, but we can change our mind. Then we can overcome hardships. We need to help others who face hardships through our prayers. Job lost his properties, his children, and his physical health. After hearing the news about Job, his three best friends hurried to come see him. In Job chapter 2, verse 13, it says, They sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Job had good friends who cried with him. They just sat with him without speaking for a week. Sometimes, saying nothing is the best comfort for people who are in suffering because we could make a mistake while we talk or take an action. We should be careful. Sometimes visiting or making a phone call could hurt. It's important to give them time to overcome their pain by themselves. We should hug and cry with them without any words. We should practice our love through prayer for someone who faces hardship or suffering. We should not do anything but pray to God who gives comfort and strength for them. Job tried his best to solve his problem through his relationship with God. In Job chapter 1 verse 21 it says, He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is his faith. He did not blame the Sabian, Sabians, nor the Chaldeans who took his properties away, nor his servants who could not protect his livestock. His biggest concern was his connection with God. In Job chapter 13, 24, Job prayed to God and said, Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a wind-blown wind blown, wind leaf and pursue dry chat? Job questioned God because God did not answer him when he cried out. He believed that God had a plan. God had a reason, reason for giving him these sufferings, even though God did not answer him. While we are living in this world, we could be facing many hardships. When we face hardships, we should come to God and ask for his help and mercy. We believe that God will give us strength to overcome our hardships, will give us comfort and protect us. 
there will be time when it seems that God is not answering us. Even so, Job prayed to God and asked why God considered him his enemy. He asked God why he had abandoned him without an answer from God. We could fall into depression. We may doubt that God has heard us. Some people think that prayer is like a coin for a vending machine. They believe that if they pray for something, God should respond. If God does not answer, they believe that God is a broken vending machine. Prayer is not asking God for what we want. Prayer is a way to communicate with God. When we pray to God, we must have faith that God is listening to our cries. And we must ask for what God wants us to do. Job could not understand the reason for his sufferings, but he wanted to keep his faith to God. So, in today's scripture, verse 10, Job said, But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come out like gold. Job confessed that this was part of the training of training for his faith. This is the faith we should keep in mind when we face hardships. We need to believe that the hardships we face brings us closer to God. If we have this kind of this mindset, we will overcome hardships in faith as Christians. Let us pray. Dear our loving God, we confess our foolishness that we have complained to you when we said you had faith, we had faith in you. We confess that we have told ourselves that we would only follow Jesus and yet find ourselves falling into other paths that lead only to the ways of this world. Lord, help us to thank you for communicating through hardships and guiding us. Lord, be with us in our hardships, in our trial time and give us comfort and help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Gracious God, who leads us and guides us through all the trials and tribulations of our lives, we bring these gifts to celebrate the ministries of justice and hope in which our church is embarked. Lord, be with us and care us to grow in our faith and our service. Bless these offerings and take our expression of love. Use them for sake of your kingdom and use us for your ministry in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first Sunday of May, we have communion service. Please join our communion service. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly, re honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, 
He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer our service in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Because there is one room, we are one body. For we all partake of the one robe. The bread which we break is sharing the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Please peel off your individual cuffs. Body of Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's stand for our closing hymn, Be Still My Soul, in the Red Hymnal.
to the world, enabled by Christ to be in ministries of compassion for all God's people, love and care tenderly for all creation. As servants of God, show our faith to the world in the name of Jesus. Now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.